Well, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to Mid Kent College. Uh, thank you very much for signing up for this afternoon's live Q and A webinar. My name's Steve, and I'm going to be your host for the next 30 minutes. Um, I'm joined today by Matt. Uh, Matt's here to talk about our art, graphic design, and interior design uh, subjects. Uh, and I'll be handing over to Matt shortly, and he'll go through uh, in a bit more detail about the subject areas that you've come here today to find out a bit more about. Um, now, visitors to our normal open days tell us that the things that they really Really value the chance to come in and have a look around the college uh, and also to speak to our tutors. Um, obviously walking around the college at the moment isn't possible um, although we have got some brilliant 360 degree photos on our website which will give you a feel for some of the classrooms and workshops uh, so we can't do that at the moment but we can give you access directly to our tutors through these webinars so I hope you find this next session uh, really helpful. Just a little bit of housekeeping to start us off um, over to the right of your screen uh, you'll see that there's a chat panel. Uh, so if you've got any questions that you want us to address, uh, then put your comments uh, and questions into that chat panel and we'll pick those up for you. Uh, we've got Sue hovering in the background looking after the chat today. So uh, put those questions in and Sue will do everything she can to answer them for you or to uh, get us to answer them in our conversation. If we don't have the chance to answer your question today, please don't worry. Uh, we will contact you afterwards uh, to uh, make sure that you get the answers that you need. Also, just so I can get a feel for who we've got uh, in the uh, webinar this afternoon, on the top right of your screen, you'll see there's a tab called polls. Um, so if you could click on that for me, please. And then if you could answer that question. So have you already applied for an art graphics or interior design program? If you wouldn't mind just answering that quickly for me, please. Uh, and then we'll just know how we're pitching things uh, this afternoon. Okay. That's brilliant. I can see those answers coming through. Matt, we've got a mix, actually. So we've got some people on the call who have applied uh, and some who are, are here to find out a little bit more, uh, perhaps thinking about applying in the future. So we'll, we'll keep that in mind as we go through. Uh, so to start off today's session, um, I'm just going to play you a short video uh, that's been made by our college principal, Simon Cook, just to welcome you into this afternoon. So bear with me and I'll just play that for you. And I'm the principal of Mid Kent College. It's great to be able to talk to you. I'm Simon and I'm the principal, and I'm the principal of, Mid of Mid Kent College. It's great to be able to talk to you. And, uh, I, so and uh, I so wish I would be able to talk to you in person, but virtually, and hopefully your opportunity to get to know a little bit more about the college will help you with your decisions that you need to make. So over the next 30 minutes in this virtual open event, you're going to have an opportunity to meet one of the tutors from your chosen subject area. Really make the most of that time to find out what it means for you. Um, ask some questions. No question is a silly question. Please ask whatever question you've got. Take some notes, but make sure that you've got the info that you really need to make that decision about what you want to do in September. And if you're really not sure what you want to do, then you're not the only person. There are lots of people every year that we see, it won't be any different the current year under these current circumstances, who really don't know what they want to do. There might be even some of you who are thinking you really don't know what to do because you see what's going on in the world and you're not quite sure what job prospects there may be. By the time you finish your program, the world will be a different place again and there will be many more opportunities then that may not exist now. So talk to our staff about it. And also don't be frightened if you don't know what you want to do. Have a look at some of our other sessions. Come into other sessions and see. What's really important, and one thing I say to everybody who comes into the college, you must feel comfortable with the people that you're gonna be sharing your next few months and years with. And I want you to feel comfortable that you're going to be able to flourish and thrive as a person. Not just study a qualification, but flourish and thrive as a person with those people you talk to. So if you don't get any of the answers that you think you need in the virtual session we've got a brilliant team on our course inquiries and we've got a brilliant team in our careers uh, office who will help you navigate the language what options there are and for you what's the right thing to do um, which is a question we often get asked every year i hope you enjoy your session and i really really hope that i get to see you very very soon at the college and uh, we look forward to welcoming you with us in september if not in person virtually that's for sure good luck okay brilliant thanks to simon for filming that for us uh so i'm just going to start matt's slides uh and matt i will just turn your microphone back on and i'll be over to you 
Hello. <laughs> yeah, we've got um, you. Don't worry. <laughs> so um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through um, what kind of courses we have within the art design department in both uh, Maidstone and Medway and um, hopefully give a little bit of an overview of, of the courses, a bit of flavour about what we do within the courses, that kind of thing. So um, if I skip to our first slide, what, what we have in the art and design department is we have uh, three levels of study. Uh, the first level is UAL level one, art and design. Um, that's basically uh, an introduction into art and design. If you haven't really done art and design before and uh, are just kind of starting, um, it's a, a year in which students get introduced into uh, some drawing techniques and ideas about collage, painting, sculptural ideas, maybe little bits of animation. Um, so it's a bit of a mixed pa uh, package of, of different um, kinds of art. Um, this this level, of course, is is aimed at those students which have got four GCSEs at grade two or above, um, and also include an English and maths at grade two or above as well. So it's it's designed for those students which are which are perhaps looking to to um, in, start on their art and design uh, interests, uh, which maybe haven't really done much of that beforehand. The level two UAL, uh, UAL level two art and design course um, is uh, for those students which have achieved four GCSEs at grade D or three and above, uh, including English or maths at grade D or three. So this would be perhaps students which may have studied art and design before at school and maybe have done GCSE and um, have got a bit of a portfolio together. Um, and over this one year course, it's for students. Um, again, they would experience ideas of work problem solving within 2D. And when we talk about 2D, we mean on, say, flat surfaces. So that's either, say, drawing, painting. It might be uh, making posters, prints, those kind of things. 3D sculpture could be design. Um, as well as time-based, and time-based is uh, animation or making GIFs or, or stop motion, that kind of thing. Um, and over that year, it allows students which uh, are studying their, their art and design also as well in order to uh, make sure they have their English or maths as well, because that's a really important part of um, studying art and design is is having those kind of core skill, skills in there of english and maths um especially in relation to to art when we're talking about sketchbook work it's having a level of english so you can describe your thoughts and you can uh, you can talk about what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to display and communicate to an audience so that level of english is very very important um, and then we have uh, the UAL Level 3 Diploma and Extended Diploma in Creative Practice. So that's art and design and communication. So sitting underneath that umbrella of that Level 3 course, um, we have certain routes which students can go down. Now, this is the, this is the course to which uh, students start to become slightly more specialised. So, for example, students can uh, take more of a, say, an art direction, fine art direction. They can take more of a graphic design direction, an interiors direction. So we, underneath that level three course, it allows students to uh, pursue that more specialist line of inquiry uh, throughout the two years upon the extended diploma. That's this course, level three course, is aimed at, at students which achieve five GCSEs at grade C uh, or above in English and maths as well, uh, and um, and so therefore that's that's the that's the the kind of thrust of that one. Okay, so I'm going to move forward. So circling back to to the the level one course. Um, 
As I've said, this program gives you an introduction into art and design uh, through a series of projects. So, uh, for example, students have created, uh, for example, like comic book um, uh, based projects. They've done uh, made their own tote bags and they've done prints and um, they've done uh, small little paper sculptures. So they've done they've kind of done a, a range of introductory uh, art and design projects projects throughout this year and it's about building that confidence um, I think within the level one starting to get a knowledge of how uh, certain materials work and what they do and how they uh, how they work is is really in that core you can see there within the units themselves as well all the UAL units in fact for every level have a kind of a, a, a common theme uh, but the units within the the, the level one you can see there within the first one, introduction to materials, processes and skills. So um, an introduction to contextual research. So that's kind of looking at artists and designers and illustrators and those kind of things. So you're looking and seeing what, what do other people make? And as a result, then how could I make that kind of stuff? And how do I communicate those kind of ideas? And then along, sitting alongside that, you have the 2D, 3D and time based um, and followed up by a, a kind of end of year project. So it's it's really for those students, like I say, four GC is at grade two or above, including English and maths at grade two. And um, as that introduction stepping stone so that therefore, um, once they've built up a confidence throughout that level one, then they can apply for the level two course. The uh, now going over the level two art and design. So um, again, if you look at the the unit criteria, the unit criteria is quite similar in the sense because it's about building up levels of confidence, uh, skill, uh, competency, all those kind of things. So on the level two programs. Um, start to to introduce a, a greater selection of, of processes. Um, and again, looking at the ways in which we can expand upon previous ones. So, uh, for example, students will start to get more complex within their, their use of, of different uh, types of working. So, say, for example, <laughs> I don't know, on level one, we might do some monoprinting. Within level two, we might start to look at things like um, uh, Lino and might start to look at things like dry point, that kind of thing starting to add in other kind of flavorings of of of, uh, of how to make work um, and um, again you've got 3d and time based as well within that and that's aimed at uh, students which have got four GCSEs and above including English or maths so for example if if, uh, if students don't achieve their English then they would do their English if the students don't achieve their maths, uh, they would do their maths. So it allows them that opportunity to, to get those really core skills before moving on. Okay. Uh, the Art and Design uh, Level 3 program, um, the creative practice, uh, like I said, this is the one where we were talking about how students can um, be more specialist. So we have different pathways, like I say, fine art, graphic design, and interior design pathways within within that uh, within this qualification. And so, really, what this uh, qualification is leading to is is leading to students developing a a more complete and a more sophisticated portfolio of work, which will uh, allow them future opportunities. So throughout that, that period of time and working in a specialist way, it allows students to start learning very specialist techniques. So say for example, in graphics, um, which I teach a lot upon, um, that students will start to have more of a comprehensive understanding of the Adobe software. Um, they'll, they'll start to understand how to um, use certain ideas of, uh, of the grid within design. Um, they will learn about uh, print processes, 
but also as well mixed in with traditional techniques as well. So how they might create things like, um, uh, uh, say, lino prints, scanning them in, making sure they're good quality, tidying them up, creating sophisticated patterns, those kind of things. Um, within interior designs, and they, they work with scale. So they, they, they're thinking about 3D space and they create models and they use, um, and that's where the maths comes in, is that they're, they're, they're thinking about how they can take scale drawings to, to um, uh, visualize uh, a larger space and how that works. Um, and then within fine art, um, we've got students which are starting to work upon maybe using oil paintings, um, uh, large uh, acrylic paintings, whether or not it be um, some, some say etched prints or um, large scale drawings, those kind of things. And so um, within those, those pathways, it's about building up a, a good quality portfolio. And that portfolio, like I say, is that it's all about stepping stones. The level one leading to level two, the level two leading to level three, and then the level three, which can go in a couple of ways. So therefore, students could then potentially uh, apply to university from the level three course, um, in which case that they, that, I mean, the level three is the equivalent of three A levels as well in terms of uh, what you'd say UCAS points. So then it enables students to, to apply to university from the level three. Alternatively, some students uh, have sought to uh, apply for uh, apprenticeships and junior roles as well within the creative industries. Um, so it's all about what this individual student wants to do uh, moving forward. Uh, but that level three course is there to build up that, that 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 professional quality portfolio, which allows them to to start getting into that territory. Okay, um, I suppose um, looking at the facilities at, at, at Maidstone and Medway. Um, just kind of pick out some of these. Uh, we've got some large uh, studio spaces with lots of natural light. So um, within those those uh, spaces, natural light is a really important thing when it comes to creating visual art. Um, as uh, as um, artificial light, funny enough, isn't that great. Um, we've got printmaking facilities for lino, dry point, wood block, mono printing, silk screen and leather press as well. So um, there's quite a, a kind of a suite of those kind of things. And, and they're used for many different things. They're used within uh, making textiles, whether or not you're within, um, say if you want to make some soft furnishings within interior designs, using uh, some silk screening is a great idea. If, uh, for example, uh, um, you're making some packaging, then using letterpress or lino to create pattern work is another really great way of uh, using printmaking. Um, <clears throat> we've got uh, some Mac suites with large, large format printers, so we can print off in, in A2 and A1 uh, scanners. Wacom drawing tablets, uh, uh, maybe some of you might have used them before. They're the kind of things you plug in the side and then draw on, um, and then it comes onto the screen. Um, as well as light boxes, and light boxes are kind of a, uh, are kind of a good, good way to work sometimes. Uh, we've got the full Adobe software, um, which we use across the board as well. So students, whether or not they're working in fine art pathways or interior, it's not just graphics, they, they use it across the board. Uh, if you're taking it, say if you've done a painting and a big oil painting, and you take a photograph, you want to make sure that you uh, maybe take into Photoshop, adjust those colors, make sure it's just right. And you're kind of you're getting a picture which looks like what you can see and not what the camera's given you. So therefore, you know, those kind of things are quite good, uh, which leads on to the uh, DSLR cameras. If you're not sure, they're the ones with the big kind of lens on the front. Um, which you usually get a better image on. Uh, we do live drawing as well within studios. Um, we've got clay and ceramics equipment. And so we fire work and we use glazes and stuff like that. 
uh, sewing machines and mannequins. Uh, we do have access to the photographic studios and students have used that in the past. Um, students which have been interested in say fashion, for example, they've, uh, they've gone down to the uh, photographic studio and used the studio in order to document and to, to photograph the dresses which they've made, um, which has been a really good thing uh, with professional lighting and backgrounds and that kind of stuff. Uh, and then vacuum forming machine, that's always handy. Um, if, you're, if you're making something at a smaller scale, especially in terms of model making, those kind of things can come in handy. So all those kind of bits of equipment there gives you kind of an idea about how they sew into each one of the areas which we have. Um, okay, and I suppose um, I kind of always think that when 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 you start uh, or start an interest in somewhere, it starts with maybe um, just a genuine I'm interested in doing something creative. But as to whether or not what that is, a lot of the students can kind of think, well, I, I don't know. I just know I want to make something create, be something creative. So by by doing these courses, whether or not it's going from the level one to level two to level three or level two to level three, um, it's it's starting to have an idea in the back of your mind as far as to um, what it is you <laughs> what it is you can go on to do. So whether or not that's um, uh, say uh, being an architect or whether or not it's gonna be a costume designer, uh, whether or not it's a fashion designer, footwear designer, gallery staff, graphic designer, uh, illustrator, et cetera, et cetera. Sorry, there's an alarm going on. Yeah, and if nothing else, this proves that these sessions really are live. Matt, you're not ignoring a fire alarm, are you? You don't need to leave us at the moment. No, no, it's a car alarm going on. I'm, I'm really sorry to interrupt you. I'll let you carry on, but I just thought I ought to ask. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll continue anyway. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, throughout that period of time, um, it's trying to think about where your interests lie and then what it is you want to do moving forward. And, you know, why we offer at the level three these courses, which I suppose are slightly more uh, specialist, it allows um, students to develop slightly more um, tweaked portfolios. So, for example, I mean, if a student's interested in perhaps um, being a graphic designer or illustrator or perhaps interested in like web design then doing a graphics pathway is probably quite a good idea um if you're interested in perhaps being within uh working within a gallery or, or whether or not a curator or whether an art critic then you know obviously or being an artist the, the kind of fine art kind of route is a really good way to go um whether or not it's uh it's um say within interior design, you know, that's a natural lead on for some students, perhaps study architecture, obviously interior design, maybe it's product design, maybe it's industrial design, those kind of things. So each one of those, those areas allows students to make that move forward. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna stop there because <laughs> of the car alarm. <laughs> Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you very much, Matt. I, I mean, I, I've I've got a few questions that I had lined up to ask you, and your presentation was so good that you've actually dealt with a couple of those already. Um, I will ask you one just to give um, everybody else that's watching a chance to have a think and put any questions they want to ask in the chat. Um, but you know, one of the things that we pride ourselves on as a college is that the, the people that teach on our programs have all got experience working in that industry and they, they've built up their, their sort of professional credibility in that area as well. So can you tell us a little bit about your background? My background? Well, um, basically, I, I kind of I started off um, I started off uh, studying um a foundation course and then I did a degree I I didn't I, I kind of I was that typical one that wanted to do something creative but didn't quite know what to do with it so um, I started off uh, thinking I was going to be a graphic designer and then I went and did fine art and then I thought I was going to be a painter and then I did sculpture so each kind of single time I kind of went with what I felt was right rather than 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 thinking anything else um 
I then, after my degree, I started a creative practice whereby I actually went back to painting um, and uh, have been painting ever since alongside teaching, uh, which I've been doing for, for 20 years. But also as well, I've, I've been teaching graphics <laughs> for, for nearly 20 years as well. So I've been um hovering in this space in between graphics and and um, fine art by doing painting as well as poster work and stuff like that so i suppose you could say commercial artist as well as fine artist that's where my my kind of deal has been okay that's fantastic thank you um just looking in the chat uh, just making sure that we haven't missed anything that i need to ask you i think we're okay is that your car that you need to go and sort out matt because if it is i'll let you go and, and let you deal with it <laughs> okay right it's no worries my car it's somebody else. It's in your neighbors. <laughs> okay in that case thank you thank you for what you've told us about the programs and i'm sure if anyone else has got any questions that they want to ask before we before we finish off today um then put those in the chat and we can deal with those before we finish i just wanted to cover off a few extra things just before we we close today uh, just a little bit of general information about the college really um, so you may or may not be aware that we've got two campuses we've got our campus in Gillingham that's our Medway campus and one in Maidstone and we're up on that Oakwood Park complex up on the Tunbridge Road um, so both of those campuses are multi-million pound facilities we've got workshops salons uh, those big uh, creative spaces that Matt's referred to earlier on we've got social areas coffee shops refectories um, learning resource centers uh, and our support teams that are there to help you through your studies are split across our campuses as well and I think Matt on your slides helpfully you you had that uh, our art and design programs are delivered across both campuses are uh, delivered across their level one level two level three okay um so I've, I've just had a question come through actually matt which is what's the most enjoyable part of your job so we'll, we'll pick that up before i move on it is for me it is uh working it's it's being in the classroom with the students that's the that's the bit that uh, i enjoy the most um it's the thing whereby uh when you're working with students and you are, uh, are kind of working away at kind of showing them how to do something and then then starting to take these stepping stones in in producing in producing work and as you can see it evolving and changing and the work getting better and better and better you know you, you that's the thing whereby there's a sense of fulfillment that you can start to to feel like this there's, there's something happening and that the, uh, the students are, are producing some really good work and and um one of my particularly favorite parts about it or is the usually the end of year shows and that's at the end of the, the academic year when the students have have had the blood sweat and tears throughout the whole of the year of of producing uh, lots of work and then they put up their final pieces of work and it's a moment to to kind of it's a moment to uh to reflect upon and think about all of that hard work that they've achieved and what they've managed to produce and and being proud being proud of that fantastic we, we've had another question through which um Hayley's picked up in the chat which is great but we had a question which was how long are each of the course levels um so the answer that we've got there is level one and level two are one year each and level three takes two years to complete yeah Excellent. yeah yeah the extended diploma in level three is two years the others are, are, are one year courses okay no worries i'm going to keep going but it's more important that people get to ask you questions matt so if i need to uh need to abandon what i'm saying and come back to you then i will um and actually you know it's just, another one's just come in so um obviously someone's aware that we we're doing a lot of online teaching at the moment um so uh the question is how long will uh online teaching continue for them um uh, well in terms of in terms of the online teaching um i think that uh i think they're still being being reviewed um i think there will be elements of online teaching uh come september um i think that um we have been 
using online technologies over the last couple of months, um, whether or not that's been through Zoom and Slack, as well as uh, OneNote. But there will be um, no doubt some online form of teaching. What we've what we've been finding is is we've been trying out new bits of equipment and new bits of technology, and I think that um, uh, regardless, these days um, having having use of online resources and being able to work from anywhere is going to be a fixture within within a program anyway. So, yeah. um, I would say as to to what extent. Um, I think that we'll we'll have to see what what next year holds a little bit more, but uh, yeah, I mean there will be uh, an online aspect of that. Yeah, just just to help you out on that as well, Matt. I mean, obviously, I can't comment specifically on the art and design programs because you're the expert coming from that field. But I think for us generally, um, we've got about eight thousand students that work with us, uh, and trying to bring eight thousand students back into face-to-face -face learning at our campuses while trying to maintain all of the social distancing regulations. Um, that you know, that's really challenging, and it's as challenging for us as it is for everybody else. And then, as much as we would really love to see all of our staff and students back together like that whether it's in a workshop a classroom a social area wherever it might be our priority has got to be keeping everybody safe you know that that's priority number one and that means that until we get some changes in government advice um, we have to take uh, and we will take steps to carefully monitor and control the number of people that we have on our camp campuses and in individual spaces at any one time so I think you're, you're absolutely right Matt that blended learning approach which is a combination of um, uh, the face-to-face uh, tutor-led -face, uh, stuff in classrooms and the tutor-led work that might take place virtually and online, that's something that's likely to continue uh, into September as well. Um, you know, I think we've always encouraged our students to make the most out of, um, you know, a whole world of resources and opportunities that there are for learning that are available, available to them um, online. I think what we'll see from September is that we will be making space in our timetables for students to do that. Um, so I think what you've just said, Matt, you know, some some bits of face to face contact will still be there on campus, but there'll be other parts of learning which until we get some changes in advice will will remain online. Hopefully that that's answered the question. Um, we've had uh, something else come through. So um, are we able to show our work and portfolios anytime soon or is that not possible due to COVID-19? So I think that might be in reference to end of year shows, Matt. I think that, um, I mean, I would say that the idea of um, having an online portfolio again is a must whether or, i mean before before all of this happened um you know the idea of having an online portfolio of work and displaying um a whether or not it be scanning or photographing or or uh, putting your your document in the best possible um light and then uh displaying work in an online portfolio is a really important part and practice within a creative um a creative's individual uh, uh creatives um uh, career because I think that what you're trying to show a lot of the time through websites or through portfolio websites like Behance or or those kind of things is you're trying to um, show your work so that is something to which um, yeah that's something to which we encourage and and in fact you know we talk about and in fact um, our current students are, are creating that as, as part and parcel of um, a part parcel of their course uh, currently. So yeah, they're, they're they're producing an online portfolio because it's it's the best way for people to have a look at your work. Excellent, thank you. And we have had another one as well. Obviously, you talked a lot about the facilities and resources that are available to our students. Uh, and I, for one, really want to know more about vacuum forming because I know nothing about that. Uh, <laughs> but you, you mentioned the Wacom graphics tablets as well. Um, and we've got a question, which is when uh, we either have our classes online or, we, or we're on campus, can we bring in our own drawing or graphics tablets to use? Or do we have to use the ones that the college supplies? I think... I think that it would probably be using the ones which we have. Um, and that's mainly down to a driver's issue. 
I mean, this all gets a bit technical, but um, you need to download a driver in order for um, a piece of a hardware to work. And so therefore, I mean, uh, we would download the hardware for certain uh, tablets to work. And, and so therefore, unless it was exactly the same um, piece of hardware, it might not be might not be the case. Okay, brilliant. Good question, though. Um, and please do keep them coming in. I'm going to keep moving. Uh, but any other questions we'll pick up uh, just towards the end. So we've talked about the fact that we've got campuses in Medway uh, and in Maidstone. Um, now, there are various ways that you can get to those uh, campuses. I think if you are looking at public transport, uh, it's in, you, probably useful to know that actually on the uh, on the campuses, you've got uh, bus stops immediately outside both campuses. Uh, and you've also got train stations within about a 10 minute walk uh, of each of those campuses as well. So really accessible. Uh, and if you would like more information about how to get to those campuses, uh, then we've got lots of information up on our website uh, for you to go and take a look at. Um, now, Matt talked about the importance of maths and English, uh, particularly for uh, uh, and how that applies to art and design programs earlier on. Um, now, when you come to us, you study a study program. Uh, now, that means that you've got a technical professional qualification. Now, in this example, that would be your art or design qualification. Uh, but we wrap support for English and maths around that too. Um, now, the, the, the work that you do with English and maths uh, may be functional skills. It could be a reset of your GCSEs or working towards a reset if you didn't quite get the grade that you wanted in your GCSEs. If you got your GCSE grades, it will be um, along the lines that Matt's already talked about in terms of how you apply that maths and those maths and English skills to your chosen subject uh, and will stretch you and challenge you to keep improving those skills that are so vital uh, for you if you move to higher study or into work. Now, alongside that, you'll uh, have a progress and performance tutor who will work on a personal development program with you as well. And that could be uh, looking at all kinds of things, including health and well-being, managing your mental health. It could be work ready interviews uh, and getting ready to go into, into the workplace. Uh, and alongside that, and again, linked to going into work, um, you'll have an industry placement to complete as well, where you'll take all of those key skills that you've learned at college uh, and put them into practice in a real working environment and that also gives you the opportunity I think Matt to to kind of test your feet a little bit in some of the careers that you mentioned earlier on where perhaps you're not entirely sure which way you want to go and it's an opportunity to explore that a little bit more. Just as we round up, um, I talked to our course inquiries team earlier, um, or, or sorry, later last week, uh, and asked them, okay, well, what are the questions that you get asked most frequently uh, from people that are looking to come and study at the college? And they gave me these. Uh, so how many days a week will I be in college? I think it, it varies from program to program, but as a 16 to 18 year old, um, you'll be on a full-time program, which is equivalent to about three, three and a half days a week, uh, plus your industry placement. Now, we We've already talked about the fact that um, that three, three and a half days a week might look slightly differently this September than it did last September because of coronavirus. Um, but at least it gives you a feel for, for your time commitment across the week. Um, can I study more than one subject? Well, unlike A-levels where you pick a mix of subjects, at college you'll focus and specialise on that one technical and professional qualification. So while we'll do your English and maths, your personal development, your industry placement around that, your focus will be on your um, uh, technical uh, qualification. Uh, Matt covered really well earlier on uh, going to university from college and talked about uh, some of the students that we've seen progress and where they're going. Uh, and we've already covered the fact that our level three programs do qualify for UCAS points to support that entry into university as well. Um, now, obviously, sorry, sorry, I was going to I was going to add on on that point actually is that that idea of of A levels versus art and design programs. You know, usually it's for students which want to study a, a creative program. Uh, and, and and do something creative as far as a career I would suggest that this is doing doing a level three as it were if it's a choice between a levels or this doing a level three art and design program would probably be a preferred route because your portfolio is going to be so much more substantial um, as you'll be doing it full time um, versus you know with a levels you're splitting your attention between three different kind of routes so you know, this course is designed for those which are wanting to pursue a career in, in the art and design sector. 
No, I, uh, sorry, I just thought I'd add that yep. in. No, thank you, thank you. Um, so uh, our next question, how much does a programme cost? Well, if you're a 16 to, 16 to 18 year old, then uh, the government funds your programme for you. Uh, for those of you who are age 19 or above, uh, there are fees that you need to pay, but there are concessions available depending on your circumstances as well. For some programmes, you may need to buy uh, separate equipment or uniform, uh, and there are. It's important to know there are bursaries available for uh, age groups for uh, various different things around food, travel, childcare, uh, and actually, in the uh, top right-hand uh, tab on your screen at the moment, you'll see a tab called handouts. Uh, if you click into that, what you'll see in there are some useful documents which we've given you to download and take away from today. <laughs> So there's a download with some uh, frequently asked questions about student finance, uh, a guide to take you through the application process to get your place for college as well, uh, and some other co common college frequently asked questions. Um, so very it's very worthwhile uh, downloading those and taking a look as well. And then our final question was, is there a deadline to apply? Well, our applications have actually been open since last November. Um, it's likely that we'll accept applications going into the first couple of weeks of September if we've still got spaces available. Um, but we do advise that you apply as early as possible because programs do become full. Uh, and if you uh, come to us sort of late, later in the day, uh, if they're full, you'll be put on a waiting list and we can contact you if a place becomes available. So, you know, my advice is if you've made a decision to uh, study a program, get your application in as soon as possible. Um, we will work through your application with you, process it. We'll put you through an interview. Uh, we've had a question on the chat about interviews. And I think my colleagues have answered that already, that they're telephone interviews at the moment uh, and we can get your space sorted. Um, just a very brief word on life at college. Um, you know, every, everything is, is kind of up in the air uh, at the moment in terms of what we can and can't do uh, for communal and social things around the college. But we have got a brilliant student engagement. Uh, they'll uh, look at bringing speakers in to speak to students. We've got a really active student council as well. Um, we have live gigs from our music students. We've got end of year shows from our art and design students. We've got pantomimes from performing arts. We've got uh, trips that you're able to go out on, obviously regulations permitting. Uh, and you know our students are brilliant at fundraising as well. Uh, so there'll be plenty of opportunities to raise funds for our chosen charity of the year, which is Air Ambulance Kent Surrey Sussex. So you know I won't dwell on that anymore because obviously things may be slightly different in September, but there's plenty to get involved in uh, and to support as part of college life. In terms of uh, support that's available to you, um, you know, we understand that if you've spent five or six years at, at the same school, then making any kind of change away from a bit of a nerve wracking experience. So we'll do everything we can to help you through that transition and to support you through your time at college. Um, we've talked about financial support already. And again, uh, please download that handout um, from, from the handouts tab. Uh, but we've got student welfare teams at both campuses. Uh, we've got trained student counsellors too, uh, if you need someone to speak to. And we've got lots of uh, extra support that takes place in classrooms too. Um, Simon mentioned in his video at the start, we've got an impartial careers team uh, that are always on hand to talk you through your options as well to help you with your next step after college. And for some of those teams, like student support and careers, uh, we're running separate webinars for those teams. So if you go to the page on our website where you applied or registered for today, um, we can, uh, join, you, you're more than welcome to join those webinars to find out more about those two. Final word on support is that if you've got any additional learning support needs, then we've got a dedicated team that's there available to assist you as well. Um, and the best uh, way to find out more about that is to go to our website and click on the help and advice tab at the top. So what next? I think, you know, if you haven't yet applied, um, he, I think what I'd advise you to do is to check out the different programs available. You know, Matt's given you a guide to um, all of the different levels today uh, and uh, go onto the website and submit your application. If you use your predicted grades to complete your application, that'd be fantastic. Um, and once you've put that in, our admissions team will pick that up and we'll be in touch within about 15 working days uh, to arrange a phone interview with a tutor. That will give you a chance to ask some more questions. You know, if you're on the call today and you, you may be a bit shy to ask them here, you'll be able to ask them directly in your interview. Um, if you've already applied or you're waiting for your phone interview, fantastic. We're really looking forward to seeing you in September. Um, and please just bear with us while we're working through and processing your application. Um, so, uh, one final thing to say, and that's that if you need any help, 
uh, we've got our course inquiries team that are here to help you. You can reach them on phone by calling 01634 40 2020. You can get hold of them through the live chat service that's available on our website, or you can email course.inquiries at midkent.ac.uk. Um, so, you know, brilliant team there. They speak to dozens of people every day to give them advice on the different programs that we've got available. So real wealth of information. So please, please use them. And the other thing to say is that you will get a copy of this webinar. So if there's something that either we've rushed through or you didn't quite understand first time, you'll get a copy of this uh, webinar emailed to you probably within the next half an hour or so, um, which will give you the opportunity to go back and revisit any of it. Or if you've got friends or family members who are either interested in what you're going to study or perhaps they perhaps want to know about it for themselves, you can send the link on to them and they'll be able to see it. Um, so just before I close, I'm just going to check that we've got nothing else to pick up in the chat. Uh, bear with me a second. So uh, Matt, typically, um, I'm bearing in mind what we said, that timetables might look a little bit different from September. Typically, what time of day do your, do, do your courses start? So when, do, when are students expected in in the morning? Um, I think the thing is, I mean, like you say, I think that that one is going to be quite tricky to answer at the moment. And um, I think in the past, we've had lessons start at nine o'clock, um, you know, in the morning. Um, sometimes they've started at, say, 10 o'clock. Uh, depends upon the day. Um, but uh, going in September, um, the timetables are still to be finalised at the moment, so um, it might be a bit tricky for me to answer that fully. No, I absolutely appreciate that, Matt. I think the, the other thing that I'd add, which is similar to what, what we said earlier on about the number of people in the buildings, um, we'll make decisions about our timetables based on uh, people being able to travel safely to the campuses as well. So, you know, if, if we know that we've got all of our students coming in for an 8.30 start, well, that that's rush hour in terms of public transport rush hour on the roads as well so it might be that we make some different decisions this year about um, how our timetables will function so i think it's a bit of a watch this space thing those plans are still being finalized at the moment but once we've got that level of detail we'll share it with with our uh, applicants okay so i think we've picked up on everything else from the chat if i have missed something there apologies uh, and we will come back to you outside of this webinar uh, and make sure that it's answered for you but i just want to thank you matt for um taking the time to come and see us this afternoon so thanks for taking time out of your day to do that um so, i hope for those of you who, who've been here watching i hope it's been useful for you and if there's anything else that we can do to help you please just get in touch uh, but i'm going to end the call now so thank you very much matt uh, and for the rest of you we look forward to seeing you in september thank you Bye bye.